A school or village minibus emblazoned with the donor's promotional logo. A village hall or pier upgrade. Funding for a pipe band's instruments and uniforms. Or sponsorship of a shinty team's trademarked strip. At the Highland Games, free salmon, free t-shirts and free advertising. How much more selfless philanthropy may we fairly expect the salmon farmers to bestow so generously upon Scotland's coastal communities? I hope you recognise irony. Coastal communities are offered not only bribes like these gifts and sponsorship to canvas their support of the industry, they are also presented with hollow promises, for instance, organic and RSPCA assured. Organic sea harvests make a great deal of their farms being organic, a claim that almost certainly helps sway public opinion in their favour during their applications for planning permission. We noted at the time that their environment statement also claimed they would be farming organically, except that they obviously knew, as we correctly predicted, that they'd be unable to keep it up once the sea lice arrived, as they did during the first production cycle. They made sure they had a pre-prepared get-out for when it was needed. And they needed it. Just as we said they would, they just ditched organic and turned to chemicals. The sea lice struck and OSH called in the vet, who prescribed Alphamax, a pesticide with a very toxic pyrethrin, deltamethrin, as its active ingredient. Let's inquire about Alphamax. It's not too bad for humans, but it's very toxic to aquatic organisms. Just how toxic is very toxic? Burridge et al. compared three commonly used sea lice pesticides. Of the three tested on lobster and shrimp, Alphamax, Salmasan and Hydrogen Peroxide, Alphamax was the most toxic formulation, with LC50s reported in the nanogram per litre range, up to a 2,000-fold dilution of the recommended treatment concentration. Now, if correct, that means very toxic. However, we'd better check another report. This one showed that deltamethrin is less toxic to fishes, but still toxic. The LC50 value for guppy was estimated as 5.13 milligrams per litre. So it's very toxic to crustaceans and a bit less so to fishes, all of which live in the sea. Hmm, in the sea. Consider salmon being dosed to their cages, the treatment simply dissipating in the seawater once it's been used. Hydrogen peroxide is being applied here, but it's a similar method for Alphamax. So much for, air quotes, organic salmon farming, yet the OSH website still proclaims it as a valid selling point. Others have already tried and failed. Loch Jewett used to proclaim their organic status, but now all they can boast is sustainable or unrivaled. Both buzzwords are thoroughly euphemistic, but hey, that's business. When we examined OSH's first planning applications, membership of the Aquaculture Standards Committee made interesting reading. It's no longer available, but we kept a copy. Of the 17, nine in red were associated with the aquaculture industry. The salmon farmers were pretty well responsible for their own regulation of organicness. More than that, since we're considering organic sea harvest, note that two of the committee were on the board of OSH, and one of them was and still is the CEO. If the promise of organic salmon rings hollow, how about RSPCA Assured? RSPCA Assured is another label used to impress the public, and probably not what it seems. The current list of names shows that of the RSPCA's 17 farm salmon advisors, 14, perhaps 15 depending on Professor Turnbull's degree of involvement, are also fish farmers. And all the big fish farmers made sure they could carry the label by paying for the privilege, warranted or not. Reports like this do not encourage confidence in the Royal Society for the prevention of cruelty to animals motives, and neither does the cruelty the salmon suffer in the fish farms.
In August of 2021, the West Highland Free Press announced that Moey had proposed sponsoring a pop-up Newton room to be sited within their salmon feed factory by the Sky Bridge, providing Sky children with out-of-hours science education. I confess that I shamelessly resorted to satire and easily proven shocking facts when I responded with a letter to the editor. Let us relish the edifying topics proposed for teaching to our young people robotics and maths, health science, salmon and aquaculture, renewable energy, peatlands, biofuels and rocket launching. A commendable diversity of academic subjects to educate the young while inspiring them to prepare for the future and care for their environment. Except, hang on! Is salmon and aquaculture on the Newton Room curriculum? Indeed, is salmon and aquaculture a science subject at all? Business studies, perhaps, or economics at a stretch? Salmon ecology would be science, but salmon aquaculture is primarily hard-nosed business. I somehow doubt that Maui would teach every aspect of salmon aquaculture. For instance, would they want students to know about 1. The dumping in sea lochs by each of their farms annually of 1,000 tonnes of untreated, pesticide-laced salmon sewage. That's somewhere between 200 and 250,000 tonnes of fish shit dumped every year in Scotland's coastal sea. 2. Seawater enriched, that is, polluted, with ammonia and phosphates. That has the potential to cause ecological havoc in the sea. 3. Toxic sea lice and disease treatments, disposed of post-treatment, straight into the sea. 4. Pests and diseases, pain, distress and death, which in 2020 resulted in record salmon farm mortalities in Scotland in excess of 27,000 tonnes. 5. The imminent extinction of wild salmon, ravaged by fish farm generated pests and diseases. 6. Mass escapes and the genetic contamination of the remnants of Scotland's wild salmon. 7. Underwater acoustic distress by sonic seal deterrents to seals, whales and dolphins. 8. Destruction of resources in developing countries to provide fish meal, oil and soya to make salmon feed, with the consequent food deprivation and sickness of our fellow humans in coastal communities of South America and West Africa. Extracurricular science teaching in a sky-based Newton room? Of course! Cynical intrusion into the science classroom by big business? Not on my watch. Unfortunately, I don't suppose a mere scientist like me can do much about it. But I'm having a damn good try presenting arguments based on evidence. The most recent instance of this fishlanthropy is being offered by Wester Ross Salmon. While applying for permission to site a new salmon farm in Loch Broom, they have proposed involving the local community in its development, noting that, I quote, affordable housing is the most important issue in the Alapool area. I don't fully understand this proposal, but it sounds as fishy as the tricks of the big boys, and some locals think so too. Affordable housing was identified at a recent community survey as the main issue for people here, so they are playing a real blinder in terms for going for community support. So any promise of affordable housing is likely to have common public appeal, similar to organic and RSPCA assured, labels often used to ensure that salmon farmers have public support, but which, when implemented, often prove to have ahem, limited community benefits. Now, don't get me wrong, not entirely. Sponsorship, even by fish farms, is in itself no bad thing, and at times it helps me to enjoy my own interests. Please beware of fish farmers bearing gifts. The tiger's sweet smile might not be what it seems. But do make your own judgement. If their interaction with communities is genuinely altruistic, then you have nothing to lose. But if, in the light of all you can find out about salmon farming, the balance seems to be as it usually is on their side, then accept only after careful consideration. 
Knee-jerk decisions informed by instinct or knowledge deficit can result in disappointment. A Scottish salmon think tank emerged when an Isle of Skye community was faced with four applications to site salmon farms in their sea lochs and had to learn everything about it from scratch. It was a tough journey that wasted a lot of our time and energy on a task we never wanted to take on but simply had to to defend our home environment from industrial exploitation. Those fish farmers never offered us bribes, perhaps because we took them on from the start, fiercely and with evidence of evils they assumed we wouldn't notice. Now that we have that knowledge, we share it with other coastal communities faced with similar situations. You are at liberty to accept or reject what we experienced the hard way, but the information is available on YouTube and a now rather tired website. So before you accept what seem to be generous donations, Please do all you can to find out about the ins and outs of salmon farming. The information will cost you no more than some of your time and you might find it rather grounding. Here's some reading for you. Please take care. They might be offering you the modern equivalent of the Trojan horse.